Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls. And welcome to this, a brand new day. Yes, indeed. Thumbs up for that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. The isolation. It's too much. There's nothing but my own thoughts. And they go round and round. And we did some very bad things when we were Trinity. And when I'm alone, it's like I'm doing them again. I'm so sorry for the screaming. I I can't help it. A good thing. It is good to metabolize, I think. I think it is good to metabolize. It's good for your living cells to continue to do so and not to just stop and begin the process to decay and rot. I mean, it's going to happen eventually. It doesn't need to happen today. So, thumbs up. Revel in being alive. You are alive for a very, very short period of time. Just a blink. Not even an eye blink in cosmic terms. And then you're dead for a very, very long time. So, revel in being alive. It's a good thing. I was going to change this. Just realized now that I hadn't. My apologies. So, um, pretend this has something life-affirming on it. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Last night, I not only went walkies, I took that extra loop up to the top of Olympic Highway South that added an extra mile. So it was a seven mile walkies last night. Oh, I felt it in my calves when I was done. Thumbs up for that. It was a good workout. I didn't have any problems breathing. My back actually felt pretty good, but my calves got quite a workout. Definitely a thumbs up on that. Now I have some hamsters that are awake. Let's see if I can actually attract little dust mob's attention. He's up and wandering around on the far side of his home here. Hey little guy, come on dust mob. Come on little dust mob. I just, he's walking over this way. And now I reach down, hi little guy. And then I scoop underneath him. And then I've got a dust mob. <laughs> Now you'll notice he's covered in paper bedding. Yes, that's because I have the remains of paper bedding. It's slowly being changed into aspen, but for right now it's mostly paper. But he is an absolute sweetheart and he's fluffy as all get out. I love fluffy hamsters. They're absolutely awesome, but he's a sweetheart, very well behaved, very fluffy, <laughs> very, very much a dust mop. So I'm gonna put him back. He is a sweetheart. There you go, little guy. Thank you so much. Now he's got a toilet paper tube in his wheel. There, I moved that. But I wanted to show him off because I love my hamsters and I like to show them off because they're sweethearts. I imagine I grab my hamsters more than a lot of other hamster, hamster channels do. I mean, when I see more, mostly pet channels out there, especially hamster channels, they just like show them running around in like their cage or running around with stuff that they made. There's very little actual human interaction. So I, I maybe I'm just watching, watching, watching the wrong ones or I don't know, but I'm, I'm hands on. I, I love to glom onto my hamsters. Definitely a good thing. Now there's some sounds you have to pay attention to. Like if they're rubbing their teeth together, making a little chittering sound, going scrape, 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 scrape that means they're mildly frightened, irritated, and you gotta be very careful because they may bite. Now, I've never let that bother me. And I've always just either, when they've done that, just stayed right there, not been aggressive, just stayed right there until they stopped or just went, you know, and then just carefully picked them up while they were making that sound. Be prepared, you could get bit. That's not fun, hamsters. <clears throat> have very sharp teeth very long sharp teeth so when they go into your flesh oh boy they go in to your flesh thumbs up for that i have at times been bitten on like my fingers lifted up my hand and then just had the hamster dangling off of my finger from the bite so yay <laughs> uh.
Last night, I did go walkies, as I mentioned, and while I was doing that, I was doing some thinking of a lot of different things, like two things that I've been thinking of, which is actually one thing, it comes back to my cosmic horror pantheon. Because even though this is stuff that's not, wouldn't be worked directly into a story, I like to have the background and, and know exactly what's going on with all the stuff in the background, even if I write it chaotically. Because I'm a chaotic writer. I never have a plan. There's two types, well, there's a, a whole spectrum of different types of writers, but two types that you can see is the person who goes into their writing just going, I wonder what's going to happen today. There are a lot of writers that do it that way. They make it up as they go along. They have a rough outline. They have a rough plan, but they don't know what their characters are going to do. The characters surprise them constantly. I'm that kind of writer. I'm also discovering what the characters are doing as I'm doing it. And then there are writers like David Drake, David, who wrote like the Hammer Slammers and all sorts of future militaristic fiction. His writing is exactly opposite. He doesn't understand writers that say, my character did this when, and I hadn't planned on it, or my character derailed this when they did that, because he has notes. He has it planned out. When he's ready to write, it's basically written. He's just putting it down on paper now. The characters don't do anything to surprise him. The situations don't surprise him because it's already done. And I, I can't even script for videos. I mean, I can, I've got self-discipline, but I choose not to because I don't like that. I like off the top of my head. I don't make my points as well as I wish I could because I'm not scripting and thinking. It's just boing, whatever happens to come into my head. And that's the way I write. So like I say, rough outline, rough idea. It's like there's this one story where the bad guy doesn't really know about the good guys until halfway through. The good guys don't even know about the bad guy until halfway through. They're both going for the same item. That's the rough outline of the story. I know that. The rest of it, I'm discovering it as I'm doing it. Again, undisciplined, but a ton of writers do it that way. They discover what the story is as they write it. So thumbs up. But, <laughs> coming back to the cosmic horror pantheon, as much as these characters, the 12 live birth children of Amagaratsu, you know, mother of all, are beings, they're also, like I said, so powerful and above us that they're effectively universal constants. Like, how you can get, you can't fight gravity. I mean, it's, it's happening. Even when you get into a rocket, you're not fighting gravity because gravity is costing you so much to go upward. It is insane. And so, now let's try and remember where I was going with that. <laughs> because there is, the, yes, they're like the universal constant. You can't get angry at light because what's the point? You can't get angry at the electromagnetic spectrum. What's the point? It's like that with the big 12 named children. I mean, sure, Erugats is the weaver and is getting all this information, but on this level, we wouldn't even be able to comprehend it as a being. And it, with all the information that it gathers from all these universes and all these things, it doesn't recognize us as individuals. I mean, because does gravity have it in for people? Or does gravity even know we're here? So these are beings and such, but they're really, for the purposes of our levels, not really important. But even at that, I like to know more about these types of things. And so there's like, there's two, uh, as strange and bizarre as all of Amagaratsu's children are, there are two of them that are very, very strange. Hoki and Gatsire. Hoki is, spends most of its time in dream because dreams are a in the context of a lot of stories that i've been writing it is a separate place your consciousness goes when you sleep 
of all of Amagaratsu's children, Hoki is the only one that can go there. And so Hoki spends a lot of time there. Just as of the 12 children, Gatsi Rei is more of a deep space dweller if it was in our universe. It doesn't like being in gravity wells and all that. And the infinite city in the center of the multiverse is a pretty big gravity well. It maintains a presence there so it can communicate with its siblings, but in the multiverses, in the universe, in all that space, there are still places that are deep and wild and weird. Places that even a being as powerful as Amagaratsu, mother of all, if she goes into any of these places, she treads very lightly and doesn't spend much time in there at all. It's get in quietly, carefully, get back out. Because there are things, forces, and situations that could easily take apart something like even Amagaratsu. And this, these spaces, these places, these weird, wild, bizarre, dangerous places are where Gatsire, Gatsire, <laughs> let's get the accent correct, spends most of its time. So, no, of the 12 children, the others don't really, I mean, how could you understand that on our terms, we don't understand them, we don't understand how they would understand, but even they don't understand Hoki or Gatsi Rei, because they're just weird even among the weird. So thumbs up. But on the minor level, of course, when it starts coming down to the individual universes, individual places, individual beings, well, yeah, there's avatars and there's attendant alien races because each one of them, through the avatars and such, has attendant alien races in each of the multiverses, in each of the universes that have sworn allegiance to the avatar, to the being, and so work for them in exchange for protection, whatever, who can say. So they have their attendant alien races and other beings and other such, and they have desires and wishes, and they do things. And no matter where you go, no matter how far and how away you go through the multiverse and the multiverses, you can travel a path a crooked path through a million different universes far, far away. And you will still find Amagaratsu's children, the Sugo, already there. Thumbs up for that. Now, of course, what is Amagaratsu? The best I can figure is, you know, how there's like colonies where they have a queen that runs the colony and occasionally other queens get born, but they have to fly out and leave to form a new colony. I figure basically that's what Amagaratsu is and has taken root in the body of this infinite city and is slowly converting it all into her brooding chambers. Thumbs up. Now how long is it going to take to convert something of infinite size into something else? Probably a very long time. But Amagaratsu has all the time in the universe. Thumbs up. So yeah, all of that stuff, fun to think about, fun to work out, but even in the context of the stories that I write, that stuff wouldn't come up. So, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, vocal cords. So yeah, it's a lot of effort to make up stuff that even would never be used. But then I think a lot of writers do stuff like that, where you, you, you'll have this much research information on your story and the characters and the universe and the world and the situations. And then when you write your story, it's about this thick. But this stuff is what makes all this stuff happen. So it's not wasted, especially if you can do something like, oh, say, George R.R. R. Martin, <clears throat> who's turned his 
you know, Game of Thrones into how many books? How, how much time? Thumbs up for that. He hasn't let any of it go to waste. Definitely a good thing. Now, I know I didn't really talk about much this episode, episode, this vlog, but thumbs up and thank you, each and every one of you, for coming along with me on this journey of exploration. It is greatly appreciated. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. It is arranged because even though I count in American Sign Language with my depression and fibro, brain damage from alcoholism and more, I'm amazed that I can remember my name is not Rutherford P. Farquhar. The P stands for Sylvester. It is silent. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and I, there may be more. I don't know, but let's get to it. Let's just jump into it. We have Russian Timing. Thumbs up and thank you. And Wimpy Denton. Heck of a name. Thumbs up. Backyard Legends. I like that name too. Thumbs up and thank you. Confused Owl 29. If at 16 you have a fair amount of your memories, you will probably be able to retain them. Batman the Redeemer, greatly appreciated. And Kathy Kisscat, thumbs up and thank you. Oh, burp. My apologies. Brogan, greatly appreciated. And Kaluk Animations, I'm nowhere close, but thank you very, very much. And Wolfgang Engel, greatly appreciated. GR1MZ underscore X, hi. Bailey Snyder, greatly appreciated. Often, thumbs up and thank you. Boogie Boy Mueller 6, thumbs up and thank you very much. Colin Reisnauer, greatly appreciated. Accelerix Ice Stone, heck of a name, thumbs up and thank you. Lujan Rios, I'm nowhere close, but thank you very, very much. Joel Anderson, greatly appreciated. La Pumba DCS 127, thumbs up and thank you. And then we have Luka Brakovich. I'm nowhere close, but thank you very, very much. Sebastian Ferris, greatly appreciated. Joe Curtin, thumbs up and thank you. Uh, L-O-K-K-J-F-J-V-I. I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you very much. And then we have Liquid Sunshine, greatly appreciated. The Cat Dog, thumbs up and thank you very much. And last but not least, Cameron Rochambeau. Thank you very much. <coughs> Each and every one of you for getting me out of my head if even for a short time, out into the world, if even for a short time, and dealing with real people, if only in text. It is appreciated. When you are depressed and such, you need other voices inside the echo chamber of your head. Thumbs up and thank you. And if you could check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But not but if you would like to help me out but don't want to no uh, i don't know where my voice went if you'd like to help me out but don't want to sub <laughs> don't want to donate to one of those two places i have a paypal link down below that would be awesome greatly appreciated <clears throat> if you wanted to help me out but you didn't want to actually donate money i also have an amazon wish list with things like cat food hamster food me food silly things non-silly things if you could check that out that would be very awesome now i don't feel obligated so i don't feel entitled so don't feel obligated and if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate i take all good wishes and i deposit them in the bank of my heart where i draw interest so thank you much i can't speak english today but thank you very much and of course if you could toss me a like i do appreciate all the positive validation i get from my existence definitely a thumbs up <coughs> good lord and if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very, very cool. And make sure to hit that bell. That would be very cool and greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now to literal end of time. Now, I know most people don't watch videos to the very end. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. So it's, everybody does it. But if you happen to watch until the very, very end, thank you so very much. And in fact, you get an extra thanks. Thank you very much for having watched to the end. It is appreciated. So I have this video here. I have another video I need to edit and render. Hopefully something I'm going to get recorded, then edited and then rendered. I have therapy today, nine o'clock, so I am in kind of a rush right now, yay. So you take care, have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing.